Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter a new project every week together. And we are having you think about what you're going to be eating. So we're making a menu. What are you eating right now, Keenan? I mean, I have snacks. <laughs> you have chips. I have chips. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a fun take on a traditional, I guess it could be breakfast, dinner, lunch menu. Um, but we're going to be making your own menu of your life. So <laughs> I'll explain that a little bit further, but I want to get to the supplies first. So let's move this here. We're going to be using five different colors. So I'm using the Crayola Super Tips that come in your fall box. If you don't have that, you still can join that with us actually. Um, or we sell, we have these whole pack. You get a pack of what quantities? 10? 10, 10, 20, 50, and 100. Make it rain. <laughs> Make it rain markers. <laughs> you have options. <laughs> um, but the colors I'm using are I don't know if I've used this one before. Is it the salmon? <laughs> the fish pink? Is it the fish pink? <laughs> I know this isn't it, because it's not really mobby. <laughs> Mob-ish. Um, so Aisha said soft pink. What She's would you say? She's not even trying. That's like a it's apricot peach. pink. Yeah. Yeah. Soft pink. It is soft. Oh, I I'm gonna love have to tease this her color. About color names. Ooh, <laughs> the cap looks like a honey. Okay, I know that's why. So actually, it's a, I'm glad you call it out because you can tell the caps they're a little bit deceiving. <clears throat> yeah, kind that's of. It's more orange than the cap. Yeah, I thought this was more brown when I first used it. Um, this is kind of I would say rust. Oh. What mm. were you gonna say? It's not red enough for rust for me. Mm. Okay, I would have to fair. say. What does that make me think of? It's almost like a caramel color. Oh. Like a salted caramel brown. Yeah. I don't know if it's actually supposed to be brown, but it, might, it looks more brown. <laughs> I like that. Um, orange. Oh, starburst orange. That's a good starburst orange. You like that one? Yeah, yeah. And then your color. Do you remember this one? Is it Gatorade blue? Capri Sun. Wrong. Capri Sun. Wrong. <laughs> I keep going for Gatorade. <laughs> you do. You said that earlier. And then, well, a different version of. What was the word I used? Shimmery gold. Shimmery or gold, like that? shiny That's gold. That's why I was like. Sparkly. <laughs> Keaton's dancing. My word translates to dancing. <laughs> um, gold. This is the gold gel pen. Um, that, ooh, I think this might be the first time we're using this gold yeah, one. Yeah, it is. Yeah? That's exciting. Okay, fun. So, those are the colors that I'm using. I'm going to be using Bristol paper for the final project. And then those are all the supplies you need. If you have scissors, I'd either get that or a scrapbook cutter, which you'll see. Um, okay, steps. Six steps. Step one is there is a practice worksheet that you can download on our website for free. And you'll see there are so many different ways that I'm going to show you how to write the word menu. Step one. Step two is you're going to write your own ingredients, which I'll say that later on, but that's step two. Step three is this is also a practice worksheet, but it's essentially just grid paper. I'm going to show you how to use this as your practice layout. Um, step, I'm going to make that, what did I do? Yes. And then step four is we're going to create the grid layout. So I'm going to help you see how, if you start with this, how you can lay this out really nicely and neatly <coughs> and then do the lettering. Step five is we're going to do the different colors. And then step six is if you look, is the lettering and some of the shadows are in gold. So the gold gel pen. Those are the six steps. Okay. Let's do some lettering first. In Capri Sun Blue. Gatorade Blue. It's, I think it's Capri Sun. <laughs> I think um, okay, so when you're doing your menu, there's so many different ways to do your lettering. Um, I love this group because it's fun to see uh, how many different ways people have been writing using their own different style and spin on things, especially we did a October lettering challenge. 
What month is this? November. What group are you talking about? Sorry. Oh, what group are you talking about? We have a thank you. Yeah. We have a Facebook lettering group called Let's Make Art Lettering that if you're not a part of, you should join along. We did a um, a challenge that was drawing a different word a day. So it's cool to see other people's way of writing different words. So that's kind of what this is. I think mine was on the 22nd of October. Oh, keeping you accountable. I think because it's it was the witches. <laughs> And I misspelled witches. No. Once, yeah. Once. That's fine. Once. It was a good time. <laughs> um, it's okay. So the different ways that you can do this. This is just for you to get practicing um, doing different ways. So the first one is I'm showing you I am taking my Crayola Super Tips and I'm not thinking about pressure. All I'm doing is just drawing my letters. And then when my hand was moving down, so my thick down spots, I am adding a line like that. And I'm actually gonna leave this open. So this is, if you've um, watched our photography video, if not, it's one of our beginning, beginner lettering series, is that you will see that this is the step that we take and then usually you could color it in. But I just, oops, well I actually colored that in. That looks cool. Nice. <laughs> um, is I'm leaving this space open to have a different look. So my thick down spots, so down, I'm just adding a line like that, but I'm going to leave it open, which is actually what I chose for my final one. Um, so that's that. The second one is just a block lettering, your style like that. But then I'm taking the same spin off of what we just did above, and I'm going to add the thick downstroke and add an extra line to those same spots. Here's the interesting thing. When it comes to M's, I think Keenan and I have talked about this, but actually when I was traveling, I was looking at different fonts. This is actually a really cool thing if whenever in your hometown, wherever you are, look up and look at different fonts, look at different logos, um, how you'll, you'll start to recognize um, the consistencies between letters. And so it's cool because when I do my M, if you think about it, I tend to write my M like that. So it's up, down, up, down. So technically the downs would be here, but sometimes I like just, I'm now visually thinking about the look. I like having them like that. Or sometimes when I do my M's, I just do that spot. Well, no, that looks kind of visually weird. That's now. a strange word. What? Minim. <laughs> Threw me off for a second. <laughs> um, I know that was a very weird side tangent, but I just wanted to say that if you're, if you're realizing, Nicole, you draw, these are all, these could all technically be downs. Um, I visually would either, it's up to you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you decide. Because <laughs> I know some people are like, I don't know if that's right. But you decide. So same thing on the end. I'm going to choose to do these spots. Okay, so that's that same look. And then on, what's different on this one is serif lettering, where you have these foots or these serifs, and I'm just adding a little line on the corners or the edges of these letters, like that. Okay, next one, I'm gonna jam through these, is whether it's like a bubble or block lettering, but I am leaving them a little bit open. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add the shadow. So the shadow is when you think about, so this is the shadows cast on my left. So it's where you're thinking my light source then is on this side or the right. And it's the opposite is where you draw your shadow. So maybe I'll, I'm gonna do the same thing. So my light source is here. So it's hitting my M and it's casting a shadow on the opposite side. So when I do this also, you might notice is that I can make a thicker line by angling my brush just a tad. So what I mean by that is that while you're starting to get to know your super tips is that you can still get a thin line by using the tip. Whereas when I angle it a little bit more, I'm using more of the belly of it. Or if I angle it even more, you get an even thicker line. So that's how I was able to just make a thick line on one stroke, is I just was trying to use a different part of this pen. Oh my goodness. This fly. Gone. I'd like to apologize for the fly. I have not been able to kill it. He killed one though. I got one, there were two and a half. It was like a really little one. Two and a half. <laughs> 
Um, okay, next one. Oh, I didn't realize I did this. I drew a banner for you guys. We have a project called You Are Enough banner that was a few weeks ago. Um, you can go back and watch that. It's on craft paper and I have a breakdown of how to draw a banner. But I'll draw this one fairly quickly. So I'm gonna draw two parallel lines, cap it off, and then to add the ends of the banner, draw a line here, here, here. So I'm making essentially the other sides of it and then I'm capping it off with a ribbon style. And then I'm gonna add a line here, color that in. So I'm drawing the behind of the banner like that. And then you can do your lettering however you want. Maybe you do it in script or not. Mm, okay. Then the second half of this sheet is they are in more of a slanty style lettered. So all of them are angled and that's why you see these lines that are here that I wanted to help you practice. So what we're doing is when I draw my letters, instead of drawing, if I were to draw the same word, but draw them straight up and down, it would look like that. However, when I angle it, I'm gonna try and have all my downstrokes be parallel to those lines. So you'll notice that this line is like this, and this line is like that. So that is how you create that style. Is that italics? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. It italics? I don't know why in the lettering community, I, I don't really hear that term that often. I think of an italic font, maybe. But it is italic, slanted. Interesting. Because that is the same, that's, yeah. Right? Yes. That's why I asked you, though, because... I had no idea. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, because I'm sure other people were wondering that too. Um, it's good you're here, Keenan. You're here for the people. Um, I'm learning along with them. So uh, this next one. I wanted to show how you can play with the height of your letters. So menu is all of these letters, especially if you're doing menu or M lowercase, all of these letters hit the X height, which is where all your lowercase letters hit. So I actually I made this a capital M, but you'll notice that here is that if you draw a line across the tops of the letters, it goes like this. And similarly on the bottom, it's not all hitting this bottom line. So how you can do that and how you can experiment is, I also added a little flourish to this. A flourish is just an extension or a little curve off of your letters. Um, is try and challenge yourself and see, pretend like those aren't there or just purposefully use them as your guideline and change it up a little bit. So I just didn't come all the way down on this one. And then you can maybe make the humps of your M's different. Um, so you can also do, I'll do it on this one. You can do the opposite where it goes higher, lower, or lower, higher. All great, all up to you. Um, but then on this one, I made the hump part of the N a little bit taller. So that's right here, this versus this. And then maybe you make your U a little bit smaller. So it, this is kind of a play on bounce lettering, but know that I just wanted you to experiment and to see how you can, by making those small little changes, and I realize I didn't connect the M to the E here, but I did here. Those are small little changes that you can make that will make your lettering, even one word, just look a little bit different. Okay, this one I thought about thick and thin within, which we went over in the uh, year own kind of beautiful on the first project. But on this one, um, for those of you who didn't see it, is what I'm referencing is I'm thinking about amount of pressure that I'm applying to this. So the difference between these and the Tombow Dual brush pens, like um, if you've ever used those or any brush pens, is you, you are creating the thin and thick lines by just the shape of the brush. So with this, it's not really that, sh it's not shaped like that. So we have to physically add a lot more pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna still do my same script style lettering, but I'm gonna go thin on the up and I'm gonna push harder within. So thin on the up, thick on the down. Interesting sounds. I was gonna say, can you hear it? <laughs> I 
And you could probably see me like clinching. So that was all just completely with pressure, whereas all the other ones thus far, I have just kind of drawn out like I usually do. Um, last option is a play on these where, ah, oh, I, these should have lines. Wow, all good. Um, pretend like these have lines or you can draw your own lines if you need, if you want help, but this is, italic lettering where I angled all of my strokes to be on an angle so that's why that looks a little bit different and then I did the same thing and added the thick down strokes and then left it open you could color it in but I left it open but on this one I thought it'd be cool just to play it up, mix it up add a little pattern within and do something like that so I just wanted to show you there's so many different ways to do this. Which one do you like, Keenan? I actually like that, that bottom one. This one? Yeah, I like the bottom one because it makes me think of candy canes. Oh, and Christmas. And I love Christmas. And your birthday. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe you can let us know which one you like or I will see it on your own menu. Um, but that's the first step. Okay, the next one is... Going to, do I have extra, well, maybe I'll just use the back of this, um, or the back of this. I would like you to think about, this is where you're going to come in, Keenan. Think about your life. So when I say that is, if you're looking at my menu, I have my starters, I have my entrees, and, my, and I have my desserts. If you're doing this for your family holiday gathering. Maybe make a few of these for them. This would be really cool to surprise them. Hey, look what I'm learning um, and show off your skills. But just as a fun exercise and for us all to get to know each other, I thought it'd be cool to kind of make it your own life. So for example, my starters, when I start my day or what I need is I need seven hours of sleep, which sometimes it varies. And I'm a green tea drinker. I'm sure most people are coffee drinkers but I love green tea. So those are my starters. You can think about it. Okay, I'll think about it. Okay. My entrees are the bulk and the meat of my life and what I, I, I live with, I live by. So you can take it as, you can be as broad as you want. Um, but I said my entrees, the big meat of my life for my family and friends. Um, I could have just put exercising, but yoga is a big thing because I have bad backs and it just helps me um, become mindful. Yoga, connection, whether that's with people or myself or anything, I think of connection. Kindness, I love traveling and creativity. So those are core aspects of who I felt like I was when I was designing this. And then I put the desserts as the fun bonus, not something that you don't always get dessert. So I love stargazing. I could have put, I love sunsets and sunrises, um, but this was just kind of a fun way, stargazing, and then for food, anything chocolate. I love. Um, so take your, t you can pause and you can write your own, um, but what I'd like you to do is write it out, just scribble it out. It doesn't need to be, look, great, just scribble it on a piece of paper. So I'm gonna ask Keenan. do you know yours? Have you, oh, oh, you're going to do it too. I was going to write them oh, down. I'm going to write yours. You're going to write mine? Yeah. Well, I got to organize. Okay, okay, okay. You can do it. So It doesn't need to be that many. Also think about it. I mean, yeah, don't have a lot of space, so. Your starters make me think of things I don't do in the morning or rarely get. So like I rarely get seven hours of sleep because of just children. Yeah. Uh, it'd be nice though. Uh... Mmm, starters. Uh, ooh. Well, mm. now you, with your eating, you... <laughs> now I don't even eat breakfast. <sighs> I'm struggling here. We'll say socks. I need a good, <laughs> clean pair of socks in the morning to get me going. Do you match your socks? Are yeah, you still... It's not necessary. Yeah, I, yeah okay. Yeah. I, normally, I love that. Normally I do, but normally I also don't. So you decide. <laughs> okay, socks. Okay, so socks. <laughs> what else do I need to just really get me going to, for the day or life? Hmm. 
I love a, a good, good morning hug from oh, yeah. my youngest because she just, gave, well, both of them obviously, but the youngest girl, she just gives me the most melting hugs. She just falls into my, my, my chest and wraps her little arms around my head as best she can. It's my favorite. So I'll say those are my starters. Okay, I love that. Okay. Entrees. That's easy. That's family. That's friends. And one of my favorite things, yours was connection, but I mm -hmm. think of like just specific people. Mm -hmm. Not specific people. I should say people in general. are the connection in general. So, so like I, if I can meet new people, that's my jam. I love that. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, like if I get the chance to run the store here, I love that because I get to greet the uh, quilters that roll in and they're my bread and butter. I'm trying to think how I want you to write that people. It's people? just people. I think connection's a good one. Yeah. I feel like connection. I feel like that'd be good. But you can't for you steal too. mine. Yeah, but or I can't steal yours. <laughs> you can steal mine. I All right. think I'll say connection. I believe that for you. I don't know about kindness. I'll skip that one next. <laughs> those are good. We can just Yeah, those No, I are need good. one more. Give me one more. Four okay. lines. Oh, music. Oh. <laughs> Those are great. Okay. Okay, dessert. Your fun, cool things. I, uh, I already know for you. What do you think? Well, you go first. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say anything video or yeah. like electronic. You, yeah. yeah, so I was going to say drones. Mostly, I was going to say hobbies because my hobbies, mm. oh my goodness, I have so many hobbies. Knife making, I've made uh, bows, I've made... Um, what else have I made? Pinewood Derby cars. Oh. I've made all kinds of different things out of wood. I like to build things. Uh, just that's why I said hobbies. But then especially lately, cameras, video, drones, stuff like that. This is perfect. Then everyone can work with us while I'm <laughs> chit-chatting my ideas. Hobbies, a.k.a. drones. A.k.a. drones, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, okay, do you want me to just put that as your dessert? Yeah, or? that's definitely a dessert. Okay. But also food. Yeah, do you have a food? Just. Well, anything chocolate, but I can't steal yours. So I'd have to say. Just chocolate. <laughs> only. Anything. Chocolate no. only. <laughs> do you pick the word anything or chocolate? You want to put chocolate? For food? Yeah. Mm, yeah, put chocolate. Okay. <laughs> That was a fun exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you do this with a friend and you do it and you ask each other and you do that. And or you could do it because it's always uh, to find things that you think would be good for these. It's, it's sometimes easier to find four other people. Four? So that'd be a fun exercise too. Yeah, like like if it's a family member, you could do their their starters or like, you know, something funny about them that you notice they always have with them. Oh. And then their entrees would be things that they require to survive throughout their day, like their phone or their phone charger or a power pack to keep their phone on, <laughs> like something like that. That would be really fun to do to like a sibling or a parent. <laughs> this is going to be a new family activity. Yeah, Hopefully I don't cause drama. <laughs> I would feel so bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, anyways, I hope you had fun doing yours. I'm going to use Keenan's for my menu that I'm going to do. And as you can see, I don't even know if you can read, this is my scribble. Why, which is why I don't really talk about this a lot. Handwriting is different than hand lettering. This is my handwriting. This is how I write notes. This is my scribble. This is my hand lettering. It's by being mindful and thinking about it. And we're doing art. So, okay, that was step two. Step three is, so... The Bristol paper that you guys have is 9 by 12. I thought that it would be cool to just do something different, so what I did was I cut this sheet into thirds. It might be easier to see this. So this is a third of the paper. So it's 4, because 4 times 3 is 12, by 9. <laughs> Um, so I used, we have, uh, I just used a scrapbook cutter like this because it was easier and handy, or you can just use a ruler and then use scissors. Okay. Once you do that, you need to have this handy. 
is this grid paper. Um, you can also get a pack of grid paper if you'd like to do that. Grid paper is really handy when it comes to layout on things that you kind of want to have a straight line. Um, I learned this when I was doing a lot of weddings and I was designing menus or designing things that wanted to be straight rather than a lot of the art we do here doesn't have to be in the straight line. It's more up for interpretation um, and you don't have to feel like it needs to be structured, which you can do for this one, but I wanted to show a way to help you if you do want to make it on a straight line. So I made this grid paper as a, as a handout that you can just print out. So you either do this in the center or on the side, but what I'm going to do is Oh, I think I moved. Oh well. I'm outlining this. So once you do that and outline it, let me actually draw this line. Um, now what you can do is, how did I set this up? Okay. If you look at this, there are four different sections if you use menu as here. Can, is this still in the shot? Yes, it is. Okay. I, I sprawl, so <laughs> I have to double check. Um, is draw yourself, think of drawing four different grids to help you um, to figure out spatially how you want to lay this out. So when I look at this even, I had two things here. We'll just make this a little bit different. So I'm going to give, Keenan, I'm going to give you three lines. So this is three lines. This is four lines, and this is two lines. So I'm not, I wrote, wrote that down just so I can visually see that this needs to be a little bit more. This needs, so this is the biggest, this is the um, medium, and this is the smallest. I'm not taking this and saying, okay, I need to actually draw a grid for him for two lines. It's more like I said, I just wanted to see what's the biggest and what's the smallest. Um, so when I do this, you can either start from the top and go down, or, I think I'm going to do it that way. I was going to say, or you can start with the biggest. But what I do is I'm going to draw, let's see. Let's think if I draw a menu about that big and kind of visualize it. Um, let me draw his starters. Um, I'm going to give myself, so what I was thinking was I'm going to give myself two squares here on each side because I want to add a border. So I'm going to leave that there. Then let's see. I'm And this is trial and error as well. So I'm going to do that big. And then this is his entree. So it needs to be a little bit bigger. It might be too big. I think that is. But I'm going to see. These desserts are the smallest. So hmm couple things because let's see I have one two three four one two I have two dots or two squares at the top and four at the bottom so if you like this which here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make this one give it one more square and move this one did I give myself yeah Um, so, okay, as I'm going to actually combine, this is step four and five, um, cause I kind of need to figure out how big my letterings are going to be, but hopefully you guys can see this is kind of the gist of starting out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about, okay, I want my titles. So my titles are starters, entrees, and desserts. I want those to be a little bit bigger than my ingredients. So when you're doing this, you don't have to draw this exactly on this line for your ingredients, um, especially because if you think about it, this space is really big. So if I were to write morning hugs right here, that's a big space in between where it kind of looks like a different section. However, if I draw it literally inside these squares, it feels a lot, it feels a little bit too close to his first ingredient. So you can find a happy medium so instead of using it exactly to a T, I'm just thinking and using it as more of a line that I want to be parallel to. 
So it's a little bit over it that I drew it. Morning hugs with girls. Okay, entrees. Okay, we are gonna fast forward. We're back. Um, you saw me do the full layout um, and I got everything situated. I kind of had to erase a little bit. So know that that's what this stage is for, is for you to figure out your layout. Now what I'm gonna do is I want to transfer it to my final project. So to do that, what you can either do is you do the same thing and you draw it freehand or you can use your handy dandy light box if you have one. If you don't, a life hack is, which I haven't said in a while, is um, using a clear baking gist, put it upside down, have your phone face with the light facing up. So you essentially just need a light source to be able to see your lettering through. So I'm going to tape this down so that I can see through. Um, if your, which, I think I'll be okay. But whenever you use a light box, a tip is if your lettering is too dark because I was using a pencil, go over it with a darker pen so you'll be able to see through it. So I'm going to just use these um, when I'm thinking about this. Let's see, for my headers, I'm going to think about thin on the up, thick on the down, and I'm gonna be using my Crayola Super Tips. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I'm just gonna pushing. So you'll see I'm pushing really hard on my thick downs. You could also just make it thicker afterwards, but I'm essentially just tracing. Then, so I use the, what'd you call this? Pink lemonade? No, the peachy pink color. Um, I think apricot pink. Apricot pink. Then I'm gonna use the orange. And I am going to think about the thick downs too on this. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is, if you notice on here, um, you can see that these are in the color, bless you. And then these are in gold. So I'm just going to do all my Crayola Super Tips first. And then, actually I'll just do them really quickly while we're in, rather than zooming. And then, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys both ways. So that's with thinking about thin and thin, thin and thick within. Whereas this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how this is philography where I simply just drew it all so you can see better. So you can see these two look different because I pressed harder on certain spots on the thick downs. This one I just drew it all with the same amount of pressure. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the thick down stroke. So I'm just gonna kind of overlap those thick lines and make it a little bit thicker to mimic this. So you'll notice either way you get there, it works. There you go. So it still has the thin and thick line. So those are the two different ways you can use these um, super tips. I am thinking, so I'm going to wait to do the border at the end because I'm not quite sure exactly how much spacing I will want to, I'll have at the end. So now I'm gonna use my, oh, forgot your lines. I'm gonna make his lines in the caramel color. Did I add these? No. Um, so I add lines. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the gel pen. So this is a gold gel pen. This brand is the Uniball one. 
but Jelly Roll or um, Socket of America also makes them. Their Jelly Rolls are great. They're gold ones. Um, so what I'm going to do for this one is I'm actually going to outline the entire letter, but I'm going to leave my thick down strokes. I'm going to leave it open as if it is like this style, any of these two, three styles that we did here. So I'm just going to mimic that, but my thin upstrokes are just going to be one stroke. I'm not going to have it open like that. So I'm going to open that up. When you're using gel pens, you actually don't have to press very hard. So when I'm doing this, I'm just gliding across the paper. I know it's hard to see or to tell how much pressure I'm doing, but that's the kind of difference between this rather than a regular ballpoint pen. So the ink glides off of the pen. So then what I'm going to do is you can either, what I did on this one was I left it like that because I really liked that color. But what I'm going to do is because Keenan liked the candy cane one, I'm going to mimic that and I'm going to add him some, gave him some stripes for his M or his letters on the thick down spots. So you can make them any different width. Ooh, that's pretty. That's sparkly. <laughs> um, then I'm just gonna simply trace. So when I'm doing this, dang it, I can't really see very well. Okay, there we go, now I can see. So when you're doing your ingredients, you can choose if you wanna do it in your block lettering or if you wanna do it in script. I realize that I scribbled so that is my scribble. So I think I'm going to do my block lettering um, and just go for that. You wrote socks. And yeah, socks are, you know, part of life. I love that you did that. Um, maybe you have to show people what your socks are today. Are you wearing good socks? Today? No, I'm not wearing good socks today. I'm just wearing <laughs> required necessary. Um, I almost wore some banana strawberry socks. Because you're wearing a banana shirt. Yes. That would have been awesome. I actually didn't plan on doing that. <laughs> um, I forgot what shirt I was wearing. <laughs> Morning hugs. So when I do my block lettering, I tend to do it in all caps personal preference, how you would like to do it. Morning hugs. Um, if you are now worried about everything leave. So I was trying to fix that and that got a little thick. So I'm going to make this whole thing thicker. Um, if you're worried about things being centered, because I can imagine that that's something that you now are trying to think about. Um, don't stress too much about that. If you want, if you're really worried about it being centered, maybe you take more time on your template phase and you go through and you really make it exactly what you would like. So by the time you get to the stage, you're simply just tracing. Um, the other thing is that maybe you add a dot or you add a heart right there if it was too one way or the other. Um, so there's ways to work around it, but I just wanted to let you know that don't worry too much about that. Um, or if you are really, really wanting to make it perfect, left justify everything. So then you have a straight line to start with and then it just goes for, forward. Okay, morning hugs with girls. Okay, so I, I'm gonna just talk about this at the same time and then we'll continue to fast forward. But um, if you can look at here, I also added, I don't know if this is something you can see, but there's a little bit of a shadow that I added on, on these guys, that was the gold. So this orange looks brighter. Oh well, um, all good. There, so I'm gonna add my shadow. So what I'm doing is I'm just, it's gonna touch the side. I'm just adding a shadow to the left side of my letters. So sometimes when I do shadows, I leave a little space, but for this one, I just thought let's try something different and have it touching it exactly. So it looks like that. So it kind of just gives a little bit of a pop and something different. So 
that bothers me. So the G, because I went over it twice, as you guys saw, it's a little bit thicker, so it, it just catches my eye. So I'm going to just make hugs there. They can be an emphasized word, which I love. Um, so don't, if this is gonna happen to everyone, this is the beauty of lettering and doing something by hand, you just make it work. As Sarah says, we're not mad about it. Um, keep going, make your own. Okay, so we're just going to fast forward and I'm gonna just write out the rest of his menu. Okay, so I finished with my gold, and now taking a look at it, I'm gonna untape it. It's interesting because when I look at this, I realized, and it kind of makes sense because this, well, let me tell you first what I noticed. Is I noticed there's a little bit more space here than I had anticipated or realized, and I think it's just because, one, I didn't draw this very precise, and I had an extra line at the bottom, so, Keenan, I need you to add another entree to your menu. I will add sports. What's your favorite sport? Wait, I muted myself. I will add sports. <laughs> What's your favorite sport? <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. I know. Because I like all the sports, and I'm not exaggerating. I've played all the sport games. Uh, I've beaten my soccer. I... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. In a foot race, I would <laughs> okay. probably win. But I would have to say football and basketball are my top faves. Mm. And I think I can't decide. I just love those two the most. Basketball, probably. I'm just not as good as I want to be. You're good. Well, thank you. But I want to be better. Um, I just had an idea, too. There's a little bit of space. I don't really have enough room for him to add another one, but I'm gonna write his girls' names right here. So I wanna make sure I spell it right. E-L-E-A-N-O-R. Okay. Eleanor. And V-E-D-A. Is yeah. it okay that I'm saying their names on camera? Yeah, Sorry. that's fine. I was just thinking. I heard you, and then I heard you in my ear again, so I was double-checking. <laughs> okay. Eleanor and Vita. Okay, so now we have our border. This is something that you can do, you can choose not to do, um, but what I, essentially what I'm just gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna start with the blue. So I'm using the edge as my guideline, and I'm just gonna first add dashes. You can do dots, you can do stars, you can maybe draw, if anyone wants to draw some flowers on the corners. Um, but this is nice because whenever you add a border, it kind of encapsulates and finishes off the project. Just kind of like when you frame some of your projects, it just finishes it off. So I'm just drawing little dashes and then If you have room, you can add another border, which I think I still am gonna do. So I'm just gonna add a very thin, you know what, I'm gonna do gold for you. Mm, there's still a lot of gold. Gold's not bad. Okay, do you want me to do a gold? I mean, there's such a thing as too much gold. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? I was just going to do a line. Yeah, do the orange. Okay. Yeah, cool. orange okay. Cool. Um, so when you're drawing a straight line, I, well, I guess I'll just do it. You will notice that my whole hand is going to be grazing the table rather than st sitting, being straight and solid. So I'm just going to lightly graze my paper and just pull towards me. Everyone's a little bit different. Some people might draw their line better across. It's harder for me, so I flip this. 
and I just pull. Do an across rather than a pull down. Okay. Well, now I'm going to smear this. Nice guard. My guard. And well, the interesting is I can't also see. Mm, People you are can't see over your hand. Yeah. So. Because I'm using this as my guideline, so when I can do this, I can kind of eyeball. I love that you asked me that. I can kind of see where I need to, the amount of spacing between. But I'm up for the challenge. Just might see my head. Yep. So I just have to peek over. Well, well not bad. Just not a, little, bad. a little slower. Um, but versus if you plant and then draw like this, so my hand was fully planted, and then you get here and you can't go very far. Rather than if you just lightly graze. And it's okay that it's not a perfectly straight line. Perfect is not what we're going for. We're going for the handmade look, so. Boom! Boom! <laughs> Um, oh, I love it. Wait, can you come here now? Oh, no, you can wait. Me? I wanted to present it to you. In front of the camera? Yeah. Right now? While it's on? Okay, I'll do my little spiel, and then you can come over here. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, I hope you guys had fun with this. This was a good challenge if you're up for it to kind of take a spin on a traditional menu. Like I said, if you have a Thanksgiving or um, a holiday coming up that you are a great cook, and I, I wish I could be you, um, make your own dinner menus, surprise your guests, um, wow them. And also share in our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Lettering that I love to see you in there. Share what you're working on. Um, we also have an Instagram called Let's Go Make Art. So tag us in that. And Keenan's going to come say hi. <laughs> Just so you guys can see him. And I'm going to present you with your beautiful. How? I'm much taller. I'm just presenting it to you. <laughs> Thank you. That's Keenan, everyone. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, you wanna end? <laughs> Did you get him to tag us? Yeah, can you tag us? <laughs>